Why is the question that I get probably the most is why would you go tiny? Why would you sell your townhouse and get rid of probably 90% of the things that you owned and uh, build a tiny house on wheels? I wanted freedom. I wanted the ability to move my house. It also came down to being more intentional with how I live my life. So I wanted to simplify. I wanted to get rid of the things that were sort of weighing me down, literally and you know, figuratively. And going tiny allowed me to, to do that, only have the things that I love or that are really useful, to spend more time having experiences and being with the people that I cared about. Um, and it also lowered my expenses. So when you don't need to support a bigger lifestyle, then you have more flexibility and you have more options. And at this point in my life, I just wanted that. I wanted freedom, I wanted options. And I raised my kids and they're doing just fine. And now it's mama's turn to have some adventures and this was my adventure. I have been living in serendipity for two years. I've had two winters and survived and just love it. Serendipity is 37 feet long from the gooseneck to the back of the house and nine and a half feet wide. And I am on a gooseneck trailer, so that means that I can have the bedroom on the gooseneck and I can stand in the bedroom. Without the loft, it's just over 300 square feet and just under 400 square feet with the loft. And for me, that's plenty of room. I had my house professionally built by Teacup Tiny Homes. And working with a professional builder really helped develop the design. I knew exactly what I wanted. I wanted a big kitchen because I love to cook, uh, a permanent office space, and I wanted a bedroom that I could stand up in. And everything else I made negotiable. But those three things I had to have and I got exactly what I wanted, so I'm very happy with that. So when you come into the tiny house, one of the things that I love about this space is the fact that the ceiling is vaulted um, and it goes up, I think it's 11 feet, and it feels so open here. I have a nice little living room here. There's, it's not huge, but there's plenty of room to have friends over. Lots of big windows, two of which open, so you get a nice cross breeze. Here's something that you don't see in a lot of tiny houses unless they're in cold climates. But when you live in Canada and you need space for your toques and your mitts and your coats and your boots, having a front entry closet is just so nice. And one of the things I like about this space is that I can hang my long dresses on this side and it gives me a place for everything that I need um, that I can tuck away. And when you live in a tiny house, you really want a space for everything so that you can keep it fairly tidy. I have a loft above the kitchen and the ladder is stored right here. There's a little cleat here that holds it tight and whenever I want to get up into the loft I just pick it up and I hang it over here. You just hook the ladder up here and then you can climb up into the loft. It's really easy. I do have a big TV and then I just added a little electric fireplace for some ambiance and extra heat on cold days. My happy place in my tiny house is my kitchen. Uh, it's huge. It's actually has more counter space than my kitchen in my townhouse did and it stores everything so well. I didn't want uppers because I wanted it to feel nice and open. So everything is stored in below, even my pots and pans. The stove in here is an apartment size stove and it is a gas range and oven um, and I bake bread in it and everything. And it's the perfect size for here. I really quite like it. And I like the fact that there's a hood fan. It's really nice to have that so you don't have the smells inside the house. And then my fridge is uh, narrower than a standard size, but it's quite, it's taller. So it actually fits a lot. And one of the things I love about the freezer is that it's got drawers in there so I can fit a lot of food in there. There's always that wasted space on this side. And so what I asked the builder to do is put in a little secret door here. I guess it's not that secret. You don't need it very often, but boy, when you want to get something back there, it's nice not having to crawl into the whole cupboard. I wanted to do a few things in the tiny house myself. And so one of the things I did do was put in this little eating bar. It has uh, little brackets underneath that are really easy to take down. Sorry if that's loud. 
when I'm not using it. I mostly just leave it up and I sit here and have my coffee in the morning or lunch, snacks, things like that. I have a pantry here that is um, seven inches deep and holds a ton of food. In fact, I have more than just this one pantry. I also have this pantry here <laughs> and this pantry here. And you would think for one person, that's an awful lot of food. But again, I like to cook, I like to bake, I like to send food home with my kids. My home office was a priority, as I've said before, and this space is just so functional. When I'm working, I set up my monitor here, I have my laptop set up, and I can extend this. When I extend this, then I have room for files and everything when I'm working as well. And when I'm working, I get to look out the window and see the birds at the bird feeder. I do have the cat litter box underneath the desk. That wasn't where I had originally intended on having it, but it's worked out just fine. My builder made sure to build in a space big enough for a printer, a full-size printer, uh, because I am 100% a, a remote worker. So I have space for my printer, my files. It just makes the space so functional. It makes working from home really uh, efficient. I have a small bathroom, but I don't mind because, again, it wasn't a priority for me. I did want a tub. I have an RV-sized tub, which my friends make fun of me for, but I fit. And I just wanted a place to have a bath on a cold day or maybe wash a dog down the road. Um, my washer-dryer combo unit works really well. It does wash a load that's bigger than, the, than it dries, but I hang a lot of my clothes up to dry anyways. So it's perfect for me. Um, I do have a 60-gallon hot water tank under here. There's a little door that opens. Um, and that was where the cat litter box was going to go originally, but then I had to put in a water tank. I have a bathroom fan, which I think is really important. One of the worst, your worst enemies in a tiny house is moisture, and so you need a plan for taking care of that. So you need a bathroom fan, and you need, I have a Lunos air exchange system. They're on opposite ends of the house, and it's either pulling in air or pushing out air, and it takes care of the moisture level in the air. I have a forced air furnace, an RV sized forced air furnace in the tiny house. I wanted to be sure to have good heating because I live in a cold climate. We have very long winters. And the last thing you want is your feet freezing because you are in a trailer. Now the floor is spray foam insulated as well. And the house is skirted in, which really does help to keep it warmer. The furnace is actually under here. This opens up for storage. And the furnace is under there. There's vents in every room. It keeps things nice and toasty. One of the things that I did notice is that when you have your furnace in a tiny house, it's never that far away from your bedroom. So in the winter when it kicks in, you do hear it more than you probably would in a foundation built house where your furnace is in the basement. But you get used to it. I know I say this a lot, but one of my favorite things in the tiny house are these storage steps. Each one of these has storage, but the beginning, the gooseneck, the part that comes up onto the gooseneck, starts right here. So this storage step goes all the way to the back. Each one of these goes all the way to the back. So you have a ton of storage in here. So this is my big tiny house cat. Her name is Sophie and she loves the tiny house. She particularly likes the loft because she gets to be up on her perch and look down at everybody. So this is my bedroom. And again, one of the priorities I had was a bedroom that I could stand up in and walk around. I'm 5'4", so there's a little bit of a the ceiling's a little bit lower here, but it's easy to make my bed, and this room is so functional. I have two huge windows, both which open, so I get a really nice cross breeze on hot days, and the bed actually lifts up, so I have a ton of storage under here as well. And I find this room is plenty big enough for me. I mean, what more do you need? The floor of my closet is the ceiling of the bathroom. So from here all the way to the end of the bathroom is my closet space. And, and then there's an opening on the end into the loft space. My electrical panel is in there. I made sure to put a plug-in in there. So I have my Dyson vacuum um, mounted in there and that's where it charges. One of the benefits of having a gooseneck trailer is that you have that space under the gooseneck. Uh, and I had always planned on making that a shed and I store my lawnmower and bike and things like that in there. When I had it built, I made sure that it was disassemblable and even the flooring, it's got a subfloor in it so that it really uh, can be taken apart and taken with me. 
It's also open to underneath the rest of the house, so it allows some air circulation underneath the house. Uh, and I made sure to put vents in the skirting around the house as well to make sure there was air circulation under there so there just wasn't a bunch of humidity building up under there. Where I am now, I'm in a mobile home park. And the fact that I used a builder that was CSA certified and the fact that the trailer is registered as a park model allowed them to accept me here. If one of those things hadn't been in place, they would not have been able to uh, accept me here. So I was able to find a legal parking spot. I don't have to worry about somebody knocking on the door and saying, hey, you can't be here or getting a notice that I have to vacate. Um, and that was really important to me. I wanted to give myself the most options to find a legal parking spot. Here right now where I am, because I am in a big city, I pay rent to be in this spot. So there is that expense. And I have um, a small loan, but that's it, right? I have utilities that, that are solo. In fact, the biggest part of both my electrical and gas is delivery charges that you can't get rid of. So financially, it, it really does make sense. It gave me so much more breathing room. I actually work in finance. Being a remote worker was really important to me. So I made sure that I had the setup to do that properly. So I have a secure workspace, I have a good internet connection, I have the ability to do my job no matter where I am. I started my YouTube channel called My Big Tiny House Life. It was a way for me to document my journey, to answer the questions I kept getting asked, uh, and I found that I really enjoyed it. I love sharing this lifestyle, I love being able to help people on their journeys. The, I guess the biggest challenge that I've had is people's perception of what I'm doing. That somehow it's a lesser than because it's not a foundation built house and you no longer own property. But for me, that's a plus. So uh, no, I, I can't think of any negatives. Uh, I think it's all been positive for me so far. I do think that one of the reasons that it's worked out so well for me is because I did so much planning ahead of time. I'm a planner by profession <laughs> and by nature. And so um, I kind of obsessed about tiny houses for a couple of years before I decided to actually do it. And then uh, I did a lot of research. I took that tiny house workshop with Kenton Zurbin. So by the time I actually came to build my house, I was very clear about what I wanted and what I needed. There's um, comfort in knowing that she's mine, that I can afford it, that I can take her wherever I want, and everything that I own comes with. It's just the kind of lifestyle that really makes sense for me at this stage of my life. Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and check out our playlists for more stories like this. You can also follow Adelina on YouTube at My Big Tiny House Life. Thanks for watching.